Hello class, let's go over how I want you to render for these uh, these small video assignments. I'm just going to go through each program you may have used and render out. And if you have any questions, come and ask me. So here we are in Clip Studio. If you worked in Clip Studio, it's fairly easy. You've made some frame by frame animations. Uh, the really only trick to an to render is to just make sure your timeline here at the bottom corner here is at the length you need it to be. So like. In my case, I don't need it to be this long. It's just extra hold frames. So I'm going to move this bar to be closer here. I also have turned my everything off except the actual animation with the idea that I have a transparency. And that's important when I go to export and if I use a lot of uh, frame by frame animation with After Effects. Uh, and you'll, if you get into that, you'll understand. So I just go to, let me go through that again, go to File, Export Animation, and Movie. You can also make an animated GIF if you want this way. But I usually just make a movie, uh, blah, 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 whatever it's called. And come up here comes up this dialog box, right? Uh, the frame rate is, it should be set to the, whatever you were working in. And then right next to it, we have an enabled transparency. And that has to be checked for it to actually be transparent. If it's not, it'll show up white. And as you can imagine, if you leave it transparent, it just gives you more options to work with in After Effects. And you hit OK, and then it's going to hit this, and then you just yes, OK, and then it's going to render out. I'm not, I'm not going to render out because I already have it. But that's to render through Clip Studio. Let me go ahead and close that. We'll go to Photoshop real quick here. So let's say you were in Photoshop and you did frame by frame uh, and you're ready to render that out. Likewise, you need to make the bar as short as the actual animation needs to be. So if it's a bunch of nothing here, you're wasting time rendering this whole thing out. So make sure you go to the end frame and then move this bar to where that ends and you can zoom in to actually see where you're at so I actually need that I need that frame right if I don't if I if I get it too tight like that I won't actually have that frame so make sure that bar ends on that frame right there and then there's a variety of ways to export here also you can also turn off your background so that you have transparency we can go up to file and we can go to export and render video and that should have a dialog box appear. Here we go. Great. There you are. Now, pay attention in terms of if you want to have a transparency, you have to have a certain format you can use. If you don't want transparency, this H.264 is great. If you do want transparency, this will not work because you have no options for alpha channel right here. So if you want, um, if you want transparency, like you want to put it on top of something in After Effects, you want to loop it and move it around, make sure you switch from H.264 to QuickTime, and then make sure that it, Alpha Channel is turned on to something. It actually doesn't matter which one. I just use straight, unmatted, and then that should be good. And then this is where you title it up here. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to my documents. Great. And then render that out. All right? Uh, you can also, if you, let's say you want to make an animated gift right in Photoshop, you can actually do this method, this old school method. Um, you go up to File, and we're going to go to Export again, and we're going to use this option called Save for Web Legacy. And this brings up this dialog box, and in this one it says how you would used, used to, back in the day, save for JPEGs, GIFs, etc. And so, it, from my understanding, it's the only one that works really well to make an animated GIF. So up here at the top, we have what the preset is. Instead of a JPEG, we can make it a GIF. And then down here, we can tell it how many times to loop. Loop forever. Let me make this really small so you can see. Right? And so now it, I can tell it how many times to loop, and so now it will loop forever. And of course, you know, it doesn't look great because I didn't spend any time with it, but uh, that's where you can do that. And then just hit save and whatever you're calling it, and that's it. Uh, so a variety of ways you can save in Photoshop and Clip Studio. I'm going to close these because I have so many programs open. Uh, next, we're going to go to After Effects because ultimately everything's going to come to Premiere. We're going to we're going to render out all three videos into one reel in Premiere. So I'm going to I'm going to go to After Effects. And so here you are in After Effects. Hopefully you have you know the idea of where you want it to be. Uh, you know After Effects is finished. So this is my. I'm happy. I want it to start. Let's say I want it to, let's say I want it to start actually here at the very beginning. I can I need to again move the bar, the render bar, to where it needs to be. And so I can do that with these arrows and just move it over there. Or I can actually just press the letter B and then it'll jump to that spot. Likewise, I can move to the end where I think I want it to end, and then I can press N to end it. And then now it's ready to go. It's ready to render. 
Now, there's a, there are a like a, I don't know thousands of ways to render with After Effects. Uh, here's the way that I like to render. I'm gonna go up to File. I'm gonna go up to Export, down to Export, and I'm gonna Add to Media Encoder Q. Uh, let's just see and make sure that this works. If this doesn't work, I'll run you through the next process. So this opens yet another program. Uh, and this is because Adobe removed the option to render to H.264 within After Effects itself. And so it's incredibly stupid. Uh, so it's just hard to find like a good container, uh, video container, that is both uh, like a, just a nice, makes for a nice uh, uh, piece of work and doesn't become huge. And so it opens up another program and then it comes up over here and it might take a little bit for it actually show, but once it shows up here, uh, we'll run you through the next process. So good, here it is. All right, so here it is, right? And here it's, it's I want to use H.264. It's what I've been using forever. It still works for me. I know that they're changing it and there might not be uh, support for it any longer, but it's still just a great thing to use. And so here, I, this is the container it's going to use, which is, is great. Uh, this is where it's going to go. So you click on here to kind of tell it where to go. Let's go send it to the desktop just so we're more positive. Blah, blah, blah. Hit save. And then hit this little green arrow button, right? And then it's going to contact the dynamic link server down here and then uh, render that out. And while this is rendering, maybe I'll show you the n another way to do it. <laughs> but no, it looks like it's working. Cool. And then I'm just I'm just opening it up in my uh, file here, and it looks like it works great. So if that if that doesn't work for you, let me know. Like if uh, Adobe Media Encoder doesn't work, doesn't open for you, that's fine. There are a variety of ways you can do it. Uh, you can also come up to composition, right? And we're going to uh, add to render queue. And then down here you have some options to choose from. If you click on lossless, you can change kind of the settings. And uh, a lot of these settings are fine. I generally stick with QuickTime. The problem is this makes a huge file. Uh, but that's okay. Like the professionals use huge, huge files. And yours is very short video, so it actually doesn't matter. And so we're, QuickTime is fine, and then we're just going to hit OK, and Output 2, click on this, and this is where you're going to send it, right? And we'll send it to the desktop again, save. And just so you know, like in After Effects, it's really kind of cool, you can, these render settings you can change also. So if you're, if you're not doing like a final render, if you're working in After Effects a lot, you don't need to render with best all the time. You can always, you can change it to draft, you can drop the resolution to a quarter, and this will incre this will make the render times exponentially faster, and you can just see how the movement works, etc. And that's how people professionals work. But once you get this, you're happy with this, uh, all these settings, you can hit the render button, and then this will render out a larger file to that. And this only do this way if the uh, media coder doesn't work, all right? And then finally, we come to Premiere, and so Premiere, you already have a project in here, right? And it, so it should look like this, right? It should have like whatever you've done some work here. So I would just bring everything into that one to make a reel. And so I'm going to get this open. And you're just going to have to pretend that I also have my, my frame by frame animation. I didn't actually render that out, so I don't. But just bring everything into this um, uh, Premiere package that you've been using. So I brought in the, the After Effects here. Double click it to, oops, sorry. Double click it on the color to actually see if you want to see it up here. But you should you should have rendered out the entire part. If you rendered out too much, you could set your ins and your outs to only have a certain part in there, right? And then just uh, bring it over. So I'll just drag and drop it in. And so in my in my case, you can see like this video is very short and this video is very long because uh, this is a reel I did. Oh yeah, this is. I don't need all this, so I'm gonna cut this up a little bit just to make more sense for you. Dun, dun, dun. And then we can zoom in and kind of see things. And then the final thing is as you bring your things in here, let's say like your animation loop, it's probably very short. So you probably wanna play that for us a few times so that we can watch it nicely. So grab that, Control-Command-C, copy it, right? Go to the end and paste it so that you can like loop it, you know, five or six times. And so you don't have to do this for the After Effects project uh, unless it's really short, like it's not a bad idea to show these. And then just give like, you know, a short like three second gap 
between these. So this is currently 456. This is currently 506. 10 seconds is way too long to, to make people wait to watch another video. So just kind of shorten these, right? You can have a little bit of a gap between these. You can also put a transition on here if you want to in Premiere. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, you should make a small reel in Premiere, and then you're going to render that out, right? And so let's go through rendering out finally in Premiere. We're going to go to Export and Media. And here this comes up. Now, you, I would generally recommend using, uh, if you can, unless they removed it out of here, to H.264. So in Premiere, it looks like it's still here. H.264 is great. Uh, it works well. Uh, it makes a small file. It's just, yeah, when in doubt, use H.264. Click on this to change the name of it. So your name, final, whatever. Uh, send it somewhere obvious. Blah, blah, blah. Send it to the desktop for me. <laughs> Make sure all this stuff should be checked on so you don't have to really worry about it. If you really want to get into like changing the video settings, you can here. Uh, the only other thing I would make me do is uh, use maximum render quality. You can that doesn't really matter, but that should be all you need to like render and then hit export. And then once that's rendered, you upload that to YouTube or Vimeo or whatever and then share that link in the crit form and that should be it if any questions just ask thank you